Why do Indian women have the red dot on the forehead? Asked my American colleague Peter, but I was the US in 1988. I was asked. It seems that I was supposed to know the answer because I'm from India. And I fumbled something like, it's a fashionable thing, it's part of the culture, it makes the world look beautiful and such. Close master of the day, fellow close masters, and welcome guests. I worked in IBM for nine years continuously before I quit two years ago. Nine years, close masters, can you believe that? In this time and age, working in a single IT company for nine or more years in itself is a rare feat. Don't you agree? Yes. yes. Being the Toastmaster that I am, I set out to find out the reasons for an employee longevity in a single organization in the IT industry for a decade or more. As I set out to think, I thought, I thought, I thought, until I could hear the scraping sound from the bottom of the barrel of my thought process. And then I had a light glow in my head. Ta-da! Like Archimedes, I had my Eureka moment, which I want to share with you today. For survival. Now, you may wonder, what is the connection? Right? I realized after I spent a lot of time on the social media that the red dot on the forehead of an Indian woman is actually a record button which is secretly and silently recording anything and everything that you say and you don't say. With a disclaimer like this. Your conversation is very important to me and it is being recorded for internet training and quality purposes. <laughs> it will be played and replayed and replayed and you least expect it over and over again in your freedom into submission. <laughs> Aha! That was my Eureka moment. Now, having survived and still continuing to survive my marriage for the last 18 years, trust me, nobody I say, nobody can scare me anymore. <laughs> and I have a wise permission to say so. <laughs> you still don't get the connection, don't you? Yeah. That's what I'm here to talk about. The survival. Yes? Now, having given an introduction about the red dot, having survived the corporate world in a single IT organization for nine continuous years, now I want to share with you some tips of survival that marriage has taught me and I have seen this with practically most of my colleagues who have survived for 9 or more years in organization because when I survived for 9 years I had colleagues who had survived for 10, 11, 12, 15 and still working in 17 years still working in IBM India. Right? So here are some of the lessons that I want to share with you today. Oh by the way all married Toastmasters agree with me? Yes. No offense to women. This is my experience though. Like disclaimer, right? It's only purely coincidental and no harm meant or no offense meant to anybody else. I'm sharing a slice of my life. Okay, having said that, here are some of lessons that I'd like to share with you. Lesson number one. The power of now. Lesson number one for corporate survival or the survival in the corporate jungle is the power of now. When I said power of now, did you imagine Dale Carnegie, Norman Vincent P and Stephen Covey and stuff? No! This power of now is not that power of now. This power of now is power of now. I am bored right now. I want to go to a mall right now. I want you to plan a vacation for us this summer, right now. How does this power of now has helped me deal with unreasonable demands of my clients at ungodly hours working in IBM? I want a progress on your update. I want an update on your progress. I want a report on your status. I want a status on your report, right now. 
like, okay, I know, and I will deliver, and I will deliver. Lesson number two. Permanent Improvement Program. This is something on the lines of Performance Improvement Program. If you have been an IT professional, you know, you know what I am talking about. Permanent, in the permanent Improvement Program, what happens is, like an appraisal. Oh, by the way, the most suitable definition of an appraisal is <coughs> being punished for something that you didn't do, that you didn't know that you were supposed to do in the first place. Right? So, like that, being in marriage for 15, 18 years also is like a permanent improvement program where your rating <laughs> never goes up nor it goes down, neither you are fired nor you are promoted. You are in that grey zone. Okay? Now can I? No. Will I get promoted to a better place? Promoted in the sense like, you know, as soon as I walk in, the door is open, I sit, a tea is served, and all the ah, 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 ah. That is that promotion I don't want to get. At the same time, you wake up in the morning, you make your own coffee. You are not fired, nor you are promoted. So, this permanent improvement program helps me communicate my results better with my superiors, my peers and my colleagues down below. The power of listening and observation. The power of listening and observation is extremely important what managers taught me. Let us say, I'll give you a very simple example. I am driving somewhere in the traffic of silk board and small gullies and everything else, right? And suddenly, my wife spots Menaka High Tech Ladies Fashion Tailor. <laughs> and she just taps at me. Remember this? Okay. I move on because I can't take my eyes off the road for more than two seconds. And finally, six months later, she comes back and asks, Do you remember where is that Menaka Tailors? <laughs> <laughs> Menaka Tailors. Or else, permanent improvement program. <laughs> or else, the power of now. It's in. <laughs> These are some three lessons that I wanted to share with you. Because no matter what situation in life you are facing, no matter what you are undergoing, marriage or otherwise, please remember, everything, every situation teaches you something to make you better. That you can use that experience for another purpose. So, please don't curse, please don't blame, please don't worry about the situation that you are facing right now. Please remember, this too shall pass, this too shall pass, and this too shall pass. Over.